What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new mini PC from Morphine that actually has a chip we haven't tested on the channel yet. This is the all new M9 and it's got the N200 chip which is something I've been wanting to get my hands on. And this thing is actually coming in pretty cheap when you compare it to other mini PCs on the market right now. They're actually offering two different CPU variants with the M9. They've got the N100 and the N200. The N200 is definitely a more powerful CPU, and uh, with this, we've still got that really small form factor. So inside of the box, obviously, you're going to get the M9 Mini PC, a couple different RAM and storage variants that they're selling over on the website. We also have a 45-watt power adapter, a 6-foot HDMI cable, and a mounting bracket, along with hardware to get this mounted up. Taking a look at the I.O. on this mini PC, up front we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports. Not much going on around the sides, we do have some ventilation for the built-in cooling system. But around back, we've got our power input, a 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size HDMI ports, gigabit Ethernet, and two more full-size USB 3.2 ports. Morphine also offers this mini PC in a bare bones configuration, so if you wanted to go that route, you could get out cheaper up front, but you'll need to add your own M.2 SSD and RAM. Easy to get in here. We've actually got enough room in here for a 2280 M.2 SSD and a 2242. But given the newer Intel chipset, this only supports single channel RAM, so we've just got one DIMM in here. And of course, when it comes to the specs of the M9, for the CPU, we've got that all new Intel N200. Four cores, four threads, with the clock up to 3.7 gigahertz. And with this, we can actually do 3.2 on all four cores, or 3.4 on two of the cores. Built-in Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units at 750 megahertz. And again, you can get this bare bones with no RAM or storage, but they offer 8, 16, or 32. This utilizes DDR4 up to 3200 megahertz single channel. And for storage, 128, 256, 512, or a 1 terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. We've also got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and if you get one of their pre-configured units, this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. Okay, here it is. I've got everything set up. Everything's updated. We're actually ready to go here. Uh, real quick, wanted to give you a look. Definitely got that N200 here. Only thing that I see really holding this back is that DDR4. Instead of using DDR5 here, we're only at uh, 3200 megahertz here with DDR4. And these new Intel chips only support single channel RAM, so there's really no way around it. Even with the uh, DDR5 versions of this that we've seen on the market, at least with the N100 that we tested recently, then you only get single channel, and that will hold that iGPU back. But this should offer a significant step up over the N100, especially in the graphics department, given that we've got 32 execution units as opposed to 16 with the N100. Now, it's not bad at all. I mean, it's actually a really snappy little system. Since we haven't tested the N200 yet, I did want to see what kind of TDP this runs at. Now, it's actually rated by Intel at a 6-watt chip. But, of course, with these manufacturers, they can take it up a bit. Now, uh, what I've got here is core temp. We've got the wattage right here, or the TDP. I'm going to go ahead and run a quick stress test here with uh, CPU-Z. That's going to bring it up on the CPU side. So, now we've got all four cores at 3.2 gigahertz. Pull in 12 watts, a little over 12. But now, we need to see exactly what this thing can do with the load on that iGPU. So we'll take this up. We're right there at 17 watts in total. So that's with the CPU and the GPU pegged out here. So yeah, it looks like at 17 watts, we can send enough power to the CPU and the GPU to keep those clocks on up. Next thing I wanted to talk about here was just overall usage of this mini PC. A lot of people are going to be using something like this for web browsing. And uh, we'll just head over to Morphine's website. We do have Wi-Fi 6 built in, and everything loads up really quickly. You could also go with the Ethernet if you want to, but uh, this is kind of an image-heavy site here. As you can see, everything loads right up. Not bad. I've actually been having a pretty decent experience when just kind of browsing the web with this. And another thing a lot of people might want to use these for is just video playback, media consumption in general. Let's check out a 4K demo here. And uh, we'll find something. I do kind of want to reset this frame counter here. So we're going to go back up to 4K. Stats for nerds. 
You can see we are at 4K60, and this is an HDR video. Let's see what this does. So usually, you know, with these lower end chips, we'd have a few drop frames on that initial load in there. Not bad so far. And uh, with 4K video playback, at least streaming, this is only pulling around eight watts from the wall. So in total there, I've got it plugged into a kilowatt meter. And by the end of the video, we will take a look at total system power consumption on this thing. But it's really, really low. Looks like the uh, N200 definitely handles 4K 60 playback better than the N100. And I kind of suspected it would. We've got more CUs on that iGPU and a higher clock on all four cores. The N200 CPU is definitely not made for gaming, but we're going to be testing some older stuff out. We'll also throw Minecraft in here. And I also want to take a look at some emulation, at least for uh, some GameCube, Wii, and PS2. And the first game we have here is OG Skyrim. We're at 900p low settings, and I think that's kind of maxing it out right now. Taking it up to 1080 did net us an average of around 56 FPS, but if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you can see that our GPU is almost completely pegged out. That's what's kind of holding us back here. That CPU is trucking right along though. Checking out some Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. I know it's really easy to run on a lot of different systems, but I always have viewers asking about it, so I figured I'd throw it in here. I didn't have to do any tuning or tweaking from the settings here. We've actually got a pretty long draw distance or chunk distance here with Minecraft. It runs it at full speed. We're right there at 60 FPS. And the final PC game we have here is Dirt 3. We're at 1080 medium settings and uh, yeah, I mean, it's an older game, but we're working with a lower end chipset. This isn't going to run anything like Cyberpunk 2077, uh, given that we have a very low end CPU here. And right now, even with Dirt 3, we've almost maxed that GPU out, so that's kind of the limit. Older games are going to run quite nicely on the N200. And of course, we had to take a look at a little bit of emulation, and I'd say the cap here is going to be PS2 on the N200. And not all PS2 games are going to run at full speed, but we've got a majority of them covered. First thing we're taking a look at here is the Dolphin emulator for Wii and GameCube, and yeah, we did start out with Wii. This game natively ran at 30 FPS, and we're right there. I'm using the DirectX 11 backend. So let's take it up a bit to F-Zero GX for GameCube. We're on the Firefield track, and if you've ever tried to run this on these lower end Intels, you know how hard it can be. Taking this to 720 may be possible, but I just left it right there at the native resolution. And I didn't try any other backends because going into it, DirectX 11 functioned just fine. Checking out some PS2 emulation using PCSX2. Gran Turismo 4, we're at the PS2 native resolution using the DirectX 11 backend. Upscaling this is going to be a bit tricky. Now, some of the easier games can be upscaled, but even when I moved up to something like Ratchet and Clank here, I did notice a few stutters here and there. It's definitely skipping some frames in the background here with PC SX2, but it did hold steady at 60 FPS. And if you wanted to go back with the retro games a bit further, this is going to handle N64, Sega Saturn, PSP. You have a good time with that lower end stuff, but again, I think the limit here are these PS2 games. I mentioned at the beginning that we'd take a look at total system power consumption, and while I'm doing all of my testing, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter. This can be really important to a lot of people, given, you know, your energy cost in your area. And this thing's very low. At idle, it's pulling 6 watts, and I am in performance mode. I'm using the Windows performance plan. While gaming, this would jump up to around 19 watts, and that's kind of on average. Some of them were 15, most of them jumped up to 19, and with emulation, you're right there around 13 to 14. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out everything on this was 25 watts from the wall. And that's more of an extreme use case scenario. Most of the time, you're not going to be pegged out on all four cores and that iGPU at the same time. So for being a low-cost mini PC, not a bad performer for everyday tasks. Now, I wouldn't pick this up for video editing. You could definitely get some light photo editing out of the way. But as you saw, web browsing, 4K video playback, you could do some email checking, document editing. This little thing's going to handle it with that Intel N200 chip. And that's really the main reason I wanted to take a look at this. We've been seeing a lot of the N100s and N200 mini PCs coming in from $100 up to $150. And that's kind of right in line with some of the higher end single board computers or arm powered single board computers on the market. And I do think, you know, this does have a lot of them beat in GPU and CPU performance. Not to mention, you know, you can just run Windows, which is really easy to use.
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Morphine M9, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this N200 Intel CPU, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.